Let's continue our discussion of measures of relative standing. Recall that there were three that we were going to discuss and we've already talked about z-scores, so next we will talk about percentiles. Percentiles divide a set of data up into 100 groups, each group representing 1% of the data. So our notation would look something like this. A P with a subscript 10 would represent the 10th percentile. And what that means is 10% of the data is below this value. Now where you may have heard percentiles before are in things like um, standardized tests like the TCAP. And in the TCAP, for example, if you score an 85th percentile, what that means is 85% of the scores were lower than yours. It doesn't mean you got 85% of the questions correct. It's a measure of relative standing. Relative to everybody else who took that test, you would have uh, scored at the 85th percentile, so therefore 85% of the scores were lower than yours. So just to make sure we get this, let's look at another one. That's P10, and then for example P85, that would be that 85th percentile. So 85% of the data, if it's test scores, then 85% of the test scores is below this value, whatever it is. Okay, the um, equation then that we can use to compute percentile, let's look at that. would be we want the percentile of some value x. We want to know, so we've got this score. What's the percentile for that score? Well, we figure that out by taking the number of values in the data set that are less than x and divide that by the size of the data set. We'll call that lowercase n. And to get a percent, we'll multiply by. 100. And, and usually you round this to the next whole number. Okay, so let's look at an example. Alright, this is an example of daily high temperatures. And say we want to find the percentile corresponding to a temperature of say 72 degrees. Oh, sorry, 72 degrees. So we want that to be degrees. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so what we said was that percentile of x is equal to the number of, of values that are lower than 72. So let's look up here. Here's our 72. So how many are lower? These are in order, ascending order. So we can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4 that are less than 72. Oops. Let's fix that. Okay. We have 4 that are lower than 72, and then we're to, to divide that by the number of values in our data set. Let's see what we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So our n is 20, so that's our denominator here. And then we'll multiply this by 100 to get our percent, and this actually comes out to a um, nice round number of 20%. Okay, let's just do one more using the same data set. Change my color here. Um, and let's find the percentile cor corresponding to 
I should have written 72 right there, but this time I will write, um, let's say 80, a temperature of 80 degrees. Okay, so where is 80? Here is 80. So we need the number of values lower than 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 are less than 80. And divide that by our d number in our data set. And multiply by 100. And here we actually get 60. 5%. So of course remember this is P65 then. P65 for this data set is 80. And P20 for this data set is 72. Okay? So we can tell, you know, relative to other values in the data set that 80 is in the 65th percentile. 65% of the daily temperatures were lower than 80. 72 is in the 20th percentile. In other words, 20% of these daily high temperatures were lower than 72.